folks, let's get our motors running. But before we do that, we need to talk about the huge amount of current we need just to get those motors started. And sometimes that means we need 200% or 300% more startup power. What we need is peak power. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Karim Baheri from Meanwell and I explore why motors and capacitors need peak current during startup, the parameters to keep in mind when choosing your next power supply for these kinds of designs, and the specific applications where Meanwell's enclosed power supplies with peak power could bring the most benefit. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Meanwell. Hi, Kareem. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Emilia. I'm great to be here. Thanks. So we're talking all about peak power today. But before we talk about the solutions in this arena, can you tell my audience what exactly peak power is and what kind of applications would it be a good fit for? Sure. First of all, the peak power is the maximum output power can the power supply sustain in a short time. The power supply if has a capability for the peak power, so the power supply can sustain the peak power requirement by the application. As you can see for the slide number two here, first the peak power introduction. Second, I will go over for the solutions. The peak power application require a high power at the starting, which cause the power supply to fail if the power supply has no peak power capability. And finally, I will go to the summary. One of the peak power application is definitely going to be the motors. We are using motors in many applications like treadmill, conveyor, and robotics. And those kind of motors, they require the huge current at the starting. It's equal like five to eight times from the rated output current, which require a huge power at the starting. So that huge current will force the power supply to act as overload protection. The customers here have two solutions. First, to purchase power supply with the high power, and the second solution to purchase power supply with peak power. Here for slide number four is the capacitive bank. At the starting, capacitive bank require a huge current as well, like the motors, because the internal resistance of the caps is very low at the starting, which require the huge current and the huge power. And this requirement of current and power the power supply will act as the overload protection and the power supply will shut down. So, Kareem, why do motors and caps need peak current during startup? When we apply voltage on the terminal, the current flow creates electromagnetic field and that electromagnetic field will cause the rotor to rotate. But this is in steady state situation. But in the starting situation, there is no rotation and the internal resistance of the winding is very small. So a voltage divided by R, so it can make huge current five to eight times. Once the rotor is starting to rotate, so this current will drop to the nominal current. So that's why the motors at the start pull like huge current. It's going to take time for the starting. But usually the starting time, it's not more than two or three seconds. And our power supply can go over five seconds. So the power supply will act as overload because it's usually take two to three seconds for the motor to start up. As you can see here from the charging curve, at the starting, the current is very high and by time is going down and the resistance to going high. If you see the equation here, negative T at the starting, which is zero. So the voltage, it will be divided by resistance and the resistance is very small. So that's why motors and the caps application require the huge current. That makes sense. Now, Kareem, how would my audience select the right power supply for motors and caps? Meanwhile has different techniques to protect the power supply from the overloads. So we need to understand first the, the different overload protection modes to know how to pick up the correct power supply for their application. In slide number six, we have the hiccup mode. Hiccup mode means if the output current is over the limits. For example, if the rated output current 10 amp and the power supply C like 12 amp, which is over the limits of the rated output current. So the supply will act immediately, will turn off the voltage. And as you can see from the graph here, he immediately will turn off the current and voltage to drop it to zero. 
and every few seconds will send like a signal to see if the fault is still exists so he will drop the voltage and current again and he gonna repeat it until the fault is removed once the fault is removed everything the voltage and the current will back to the normal and here an example for using power supply without big power function and using hiccup modes as you can see here, the power supply power a pump, and once we turn on the pump, the current increase. So to choose a hiccup mode to turn on the pump or turn on caps, this is not the best option. We have the second mode here. It's called constant current limiting. And the constant current limiting means when the overload happened, the power supply will not shut down immediately like the hiccup mode. No. After it gonna wait for from three to five seconds. And this technique it's a help and useful for the application because once this power supply see the fault he will not shut down immediately give it chance like three to five seconds for the load to be built in at the startup example here for the constant current limiting is the same concept we are using power supply to power a pump and this power supply has constant current limiting able to turn on the load but we have like some variable current and voltage here and this variable current and voltage it's because of the high starting current we need to understand when we're using pumps or motors that we need power supply with constant current limiting okay so let's talk about what meanwell has to provide here what kind of solutions do you guys have to help address these issues here we have two different series we have been launching recently First series is HRP and second series is the LRS. HRP series has the capability of for 350 big load capability. For example, here, if you choose HRP-1000 N3, and that means that your power supply is 1000 watts. With N3, it's capability for 350. So in the first five seconds, the power supply can provide power up to 3500 watts. So this is the 350 means. So it can be overloaded 3.5 times more the rated output power for five seconds. And regarding for the LRS series here, we offer N2, which is 200%. For example, if you have 100 watt power supply, so you can overload this power supply for five seconds for 200 with the same form factor for the power supply. We have feature here for the HRP, HRP coming with the BFC function. So starting from 150 up to 1000, it's coming with the B, BFC function, power factor correction function. The, for the LRS, LRS with our BFC function, which is make the LRS a little bit economic compared to the HRP. So this is for the economic purpose. This is for the industrial purpose with BFC function if the customer needs power factor correction circuits. We offer here 150 watts, 300 watts, 600 watts, and 1000 watts. And the output voltage we offer 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. One of the features here for the HRP is the universal AC input, starting from 85 up to 264. Universal AC input means the customer will not need to identify the input voltage. Based on any country, so the power supply will detect the voltage because some of our power supply require a selectable switch. If you're using 120 volt, if you're using above 200 volts, so you should select it of the switch to identify the input voltage. But for the universal, that means our power supply no need to identify the input voltage. Second feature here we have it's 5G vibration test, which is the HRB. It can be working in a vibration or vibrating area without any problem. High efficiency, this is it can be reached to 94 and 95 percent efficiency for this HRB. And the attitude, it can be working up to 5,000 meters. And built in remote sense function and withstand 300 surge input voltage for five seconds. And all of the HRB, it's Air Force set cooling, except the HRB 150 fanless design. Regarding for the HRB 1000, so if the customer need more power, we have current sharing up to 4000 watts. So he can connect it the HRB 1000 up to four units in parallel. So can you show us an example of peak power? Yeah, sure. We can calculate the maximum peak power through this equation. The duty cycle refers to the big power time divided by big power time plus nominal load power. 
as you can see here, the maximum peak power time is five seconds. So this is the maximum allowable overload your unit. You shouldn't go over five seconds. And here an example for the customer using HRB 300 watt. The customer, he has 800 watt peak power. And as we mentioned here, the peak power shouldn't go over five seconds. So at 800 power, you can see that UT circuit should be 10%. And if you divide it five by 10%, so the total period, it should be 50 seconds. So five seconds for big loads and 45 seconds for the nominal loads. And he can repeat it based on the power requirements for his load. So Kareem, what would a typical application look like? Here a customer has automation warehouse conveyor with 14 motors on the conveyor. And the big power is 55 amp. Once we see the oscilloscope from the power requirement, it's required the highest level of the current is 54. The motor's voltage is 24 volts. So we suggest the customer to using HRB-600 in 3-24. So this power supply, he able to handle this 14 motors. And as you can see from the graph here, no voltage drop happened and no any drop in the voltage and current was using this one because this power supply able to handle the big power at the starting of this 14 motors. The second type we offer for the LRS, it's 200% capability. So if you have 100 watts in the first five seconds, you can go over to 200 watts. And L, it's coming from the low profile, reliable, single output power supply. And we do offer 100, 200, 350, and 600 watt power supply. And the output voltage we offer 12 volt, 24 volt, and 36 volt, and 48 volt. This power supply is coming with three years of warranty. And instead of the HRB is five years of warranty. This power supply has no BFC function, no power factor correction for this one, which is economical. And here's universal AC input. This is for the LRS100 and the other one, it has like switch to select and identify the input voltage. But for the one LRS100 watt, it's universal AC input. For the switches here for the LRS200, 350 and 600, it's need to switch to identify if your voltage, input voltage from 90 up to 132 or to select the switch if your input voltage from 180 up to 264. This one is 5G vibration test, which can work in the vibrating area. And so the height of the LRS is 1U, which is low profile and low cost, high efficiency, because it's three years of warranty without BFC function. So that's why it's economic and power supply. Attitude is can work up to 5,000 meters as well and withstand 300 volt surge protection and 200 big power capability for the first five seconds. Excellent. All right. So, Kareem, can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, sure. What we're going to start in is started with the big power application. So we know now one of the application of the big power is the motor and the caps. This is the most popular. And we go over for the protection, how to select the overload protection mode for manual. So we know the hiccup mode, it's not allowable to work with the motors and the caps. And we know now the constant current limiting our power supply should has this function to able to work with the motors and the caps. And finally, we go over to our solutions, what we can offer the customer to using our power supply. So we have something with 350 power capability and we have 200 power capability. The 350 power capability, which is the HRB, we offer 150, 300, 600, and 1000. And all of them, they coming with the power factor correction. And for the LRS, we offer 100, 200, 350, and 600 with 12 volt, 24, 36, and 48 volt. This is able to double the output power in the first five seconds. And both series, it's one for the economical, one for the industrial. So based on the application and the power requirement, both of them, they saving cost compared to if you purchase power supply with our big power features. Awesome. Well, Kareem, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from MeanWell. 
For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.